So a question that you get pretty frequently is, how much will this cost? How much will my divorce cost? The question is almost impossible to answer because it depends. It depends on the needs of the client. It depends on the complexity of the case, the size of the estate, where the custody issues are at bar or not. So it depends. A divorce can have a devastating cost though. There are a lot of things a client can do in order to keep the cost of their divorce down. When you're approaching your divorce, unless you have endless resources, it's a good idea to do what you can do to maximize the time with your attorney. The first realization that I think enables a person to keep the cost of their divorce as low as possible is to understand the more time that you use, the more attorney time that you use, the higher your bill is going to be. There's a lot of things that you can do to reduce the amount of time that, that you use. The first thing is you make sure you get all of the answers to your questions. Ask the questions. Don't avoid talking to your attorney because you don't want your bill to go up. You, you won't get the service that you need. You won't get the outcome that you're looking for. So that's not how to go about it. What you do is you make the time that you spend with your attorney as valuable as possible. In other words, you prepare. The best way to prepare to meet with your attorney is to write down your questions, to collect them as you go along. You might be in the middle of doing this or that and a question pops into your head. The idea, don't pick up the phone and call your attorney, write it down. Collect your questions in one place and then meet with your attorney. And when you do, use those questions to guide the consultation that you have with your attorney. You should write down the answers to those questions during that meeting. And at the end of the meeting, you should review the questions and the answers with your attorney to make sure you're both on the same page. When you get ready for the next meeting with your attorney, you do the same thing. You write down the questions, and before you meet with the attorney, you should review everything that happened in the first consultation with your questions and your answers, and you should be prepared with your new set of questions. That's one of the most important things, I think, in organizing, making sure that you have the information you need. The next thing that you do is, or I think that you need to really understand, people like answers. They want to know what's going to happen. And accepting the fact or the reality that in the divorce process and getting ready and going into litigation, there isn't any certainty. So what you're looking for is, what's the range of things that may happen? And it's a question that you need to learn to kind of live with that answer. There's no certainty, but there's a probable outcome that is you might get joint custody or you I doubt you'll get sole custody or you'll most likely get sole custody, depending, and understanding why. So if you can accept that there's no certainty you'll have and you're asking for a different answer, the range, what's the probability? What can I do to influence that? It's a different kind of conversation. It's a different type of information that you're going to be working with as you go through the divorce process. There isn't a yes or a no, or this will or this won't. It's this may or this probably won't. So accepting that. So what I'm saying so far is organize yourself, organize your questions. The next thing to understand, you can be very proactive. There's a lot of documentation that is necessary when you're preparing for litigation. You need tax returns, credit card statements going back for years, bank statements going back for years. A lot of times people, clients, will come to the office with this stuff in a box or a bag. That's, it costs money to put that stuff in order. You should do that. If you're looking to save money, you should do that. You should give your attorney the all of your financial information in digital format, organized by month and year. You don't have to do that, but it will save you probably hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. 
organize it. When you bring your documentation to the attorney also, especially if it's more compli complicated, if it's voluminous, walk the attorney through it. I use this set of credit cards to pay utilities. I use this set of credit cards to um, for going out or child-related expenses. My spouse used this credit card and you could see all of the extramarital affair costs on that. Tell the attorney the significance, if there is any, of the financial documentation that you're providing. That will give focus and it will save a lot of time and of course that means save a lot of money. Another thing that you should do is understand what is coming next. One of the questions is you can, you should ask your attorney is what should I expect? Understanding and having that top view down of the process is important and it gives you probably the only control that you have during the litigation process. So what do I mean? Civil litigation starts with the filing of a complaint. So if, you, if you're the initiator, your attorney will prepare a complaint for you, file it with the court, and that the court returns a copy of the complaint with the summons. The summons is what's served on the, your spouse. So it would be the service of a summons and complaint. Once that's served, an affidavit of service is filed with the court. That triggers another series of events. The court will set in a scheduling conference and also once your spouse is served, your spouse then needs to file an answer within the next 30 days. So you know what to expect. 30 days, an answer has to be filed, more likely than not, a counter complaint. In other words, your spouse will file his or her complaint. And a scheduling conference is set in. The result of a scheduling conference is a scheduling order. And that's kind of like a dance card. It tells you exactly, it's the anatomy of your litigation. What hearings are going to take place, the dates of those hearings, the deadlines that you're going to have to adhere to. If you have a comprehensive conversation with your attorney about what these deadlines, what these dates mean, and what you need to do in order to be prepared, and what outcome you can anticipate from each one of those dates. That's the control that you have in litigation. So understanding what is happening next also focuses the conversation that you're going to have with your attorney and you're not as confused. That saves time and gives you a greater sense of what you need to do in order to accomplish your goals. Another thing that you can do and only you can do that better than your attorney is make sure that you set and probably with in consultation with your attorney goals and understand can I achieve these goals? What's the likelihood? What's the range of possibilities? But your goals need to be established and need to be the guiding light through the litigation. The other thing that needs to be communicated and taken into account or what your concerns are. So if you have an abusive spouse, for instance, or you are concerned about wasting assets, you want to talk about those concerns and know whether they can be addressed. You write it down, you get the answers, and you don't revisit it. You accept the answer um, or explore alternatives and understand that that is be satisfied that you have the only answer that that is available. I think that if you were to do that, you're saving cost, making, making the interaction with your attorney more efficient, that puts you in control. You're communicating your goals, you're communicating your concerns. You should have the most efficient outcome or the most efficient divorce and the, the least expensive possible. If you're looking at divorce, I wish you a lot of luck. If you're here in Montgomery County, give me a call. I'd love to help you.